The last few days the question of what is that weird coating on the surface of that tank has been popping up more and more. So today I'm going to do a video about Zimmerit. Zimmerit was an anti-tank mine paste like coating that was applied on German mid to late war tanks. And the common belief is that it was discontinued because it would catch fire. But in reality Zimmerit would not catch fire and was not only applied against anti-tank mines. Da kam Männer gegen Panzer. So a lot of you have probably seen Simmerit on tanks in museums and maybe you made a scale model tank with Simmerit. And maybe you were like me because when I had to apply Simmerit on my first scale model I had no idea why it was on there. I always assumed that it was for some mine protection and I think that when I saw it in a museum as a kid I thought it was for giving the crew some grip so that it would not slip off the tank. But Simmerit is a non-magnetic coating that was probably designed to prevent magnetic mines from sticking to a flat surface of a tank. It was first applied by the Germans in 1943 by DB and Alcat. And it would be only applied on the body. But the factories would also apply it on the turret and sometimes even on the mudguards. Of course that was totally pointless because a mudguard and a turret would be unlikely spot a soldier would stick a mine on. The turret being too high and the mudguards being just a mudguard. The name Zimmerit comes from the developing company CW Zimmer that was located in Berlin. The reason that the Germans wanted Zimmerit was because of Soviet magnetic mines. But this was never really proven. And it's also not known if the Soviet used a lot of magnetic mines. And I will be coming back to this. It was ordered by the German high command that the Zimmerit would be only applied to the hull. But the factory applied it almost everywhere for some reason. And in all sorts of variants and patterns. Simmerit that consists mostly out of substance that would be used in paints like polyphenol acetate. It also contains barium sulfatate and some sawdust. And the Simmerit would only be flammable when it wasn't fully hardened. And it was polyphenol that was the most flammable. So why is it that many people today think that Simmerit was discontinued because it would catch fire? Because it was reported by the Germans that Simmerit would set a whole tank ablaze. So in 1944 the Germans had several tests to prove if these rumors were true. They tested it on two tanks with several hardened and unhardened layers and one with only one layer. It was then heated up with a welding torch which would set it only on fire for 3 to 4 seconds. They repeated the process but it would not burn longer than 4 seconds. So they even went a step further and set the inside of the tank on fire and even got the blowtorch at it again. But now the Zimmerit would only burn for 20 seconds? The only thing that would burn for a long time was the wet unhardened Zimmerit, setting the whole surface on the tank on fire. They even tested it in the cold, freezing the tank up and setting it on fire again. Even that would not make any difference. They went a step further again and tested an assortment of shells on the tank and it still would not catch fire in any way. So the Germans concluded Simmerit was not the cause of fires people reported. Simmerit was meant to be a good defense against magnetic mines. But it proved to be a good camouflage too and crews would love it for this purpose. But in late 1944 the order was given to the factories to stop applying it. Still it was shipped out to crews who were happy to accept it. Even if they could not get their hands on it, they would sometimes use concrete to recreate the look. This is also the reason why so many patterns were out there. Because crews would apply it in the field, sometimes not even knowing how to apply it properly. But even when it was not applied properly, it would still function as a great camouflage and it would not chip off even when it was hit with shells. 
the Allies did several tests on Zimmerit. The British were interested in the material because they wanted a defense against Japanese magnetic mines. Even though their first thought of it was that it was a clever camouflage. Most of the British testing was therefore more focused on the camouflage aspect. They tried to replicate it in several ways. One would be a straw mix and the other was just applying rubber strips to the surface of the tank. It proved to work remarkably well. Letting tanks completely disappear into the background. When Germany was defeated, the research on Simrit continued. They interviewed several people that had something to do with the development and also did some fire tests, which proved again that Simrit would not burn. They also came to the conclusion that the material applied did nothing for the anti-magnetic mine benefits and that Simrit proved to be a great camouflage. The Soviets also encountered Simrit in late 1943 and also did several tests. They came to the conclusion that Simrit would not burn but protect the tank from heating up. But they did not really place much effort in the research because they were winning the war and who could care less about this weird coating. The Americans however had encountered a lot of trouble with magnetic mines in the Pacific. They however did not really test the Zimmerit because the war was almost at an end. But they did have their own protective methods against magnetic mines. They would place spiked armor on the horizontal surface of the tank. They would also use planks and concrete on the sides. And the crew would use everything that was not magnetic and stick it to the surface of their tanks. These crude methods proved to be somewhat effective, but because the Japanese would throw themselves into the tracks or even under the tank and blow themselves up, it made these suicide attacks really effective and no protective element would have made a lot of difference. So who did use magnetic mines? We know the Germans did and the Japanese did. The Germans used the Hoftlanding mine and the Japanese the turtle mine. But the Japanese were desperate and lacking any good anti-tank weapons. They would go a step further with the suicide lung mine. This mine was placed on a stick and the Japanese soldier would throw itself at the tank and place the stick against the side of the tank. The Allies did not use any magnetic mines except for the British which had the clan mine and supplied some to the Soviets. The Allies did not use magnetic mines. It's also not known if the Soviets really used the clan mine that they were given. So what conclusion can we make out of all of this? Now one thing that we know for certain is that the Allied power that needed Zimmerit the most, that being the Americans in the Pacific, did not really pay any attention to the development of any good anti-magnetic mine protection. The Germans overcomplicating everything they do did, but it's not sure if they really did it for the anti-tank purposes and there is a chance it was just because of the camouflage element. But if it was, why discontinue the thing when the crew still applied it anyway? The Germans probably wanted to speed up their tank development and their production of tanks and waiting on the Simmerit to dry was time they did not have. Yeah, but wasting your time with the Yacht Tiger and Mouse was a really good idea. But what do you think? Was Simmerit only an anti-tank thing or was it both for the camouflage and anti-tank purposes? Let me know in the comments below. Says it isn't fair. 